The book of Genesis, chapter 39, beginning with verse number 21. Genesis chapter 39, beginning with verse number 21. Uh, just read this with me quickly. The Bible says, but the Lord. Somebody say that out loud. Say, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Somebody shout amen. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was the doer of it the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord, say this with me, say the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Somebody shout amen. You can be seated if you can be. Amen. Chapter 39 of the book of Genesis is actually the chapter that we read uh, most of the account, if not all of the account, of Joseph the dreamer, the young boy. Somebody shout amen. And um, the Lord took me to these scriptures to back up something that I had been studying and thinking about. And the Lord took me to chapter 39 of the book of Genesis and to that story of Joseph, a man. Uh, years ago, they had a Broadway show uh, and called it Joseph uh, the Technicolor, I believe is what it was called. Uh, been movies made about it. Dolly Parton wrote a song. I guess her mother had uh, read the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors. And uh, Dolly's mother made her a coat the same way as the family of Joseph had made him a man. So there have been a lot of things that have been said and a lot of things that have been done uh, according to this great story. But this is one of the most fascinating stories to me in the whole Word of God because you find that there's just a little young boy just minding his own business, Sister Shay, and um, was asleep one night, and the Lord gave him a dream. Somebody shout amen. Lift your hand and say, that dream was his calling. Somebody say amen. No other way to put it, no other way to try to... Uh, put fancier words to it, but that dream was actually Joseph's calling. What God was going to do or use Joseph to do in the days to come, in the years to come. Somebody say amen. And it all had to start with that dream. Somebody say amen. Or God giving the call upon Joseph's life and Joseph was just a young man a young boy and God gave it to him and Joseph really didn't know any other way to deal with it except to come out of the tent and sit down at breakfast and tell his whole family what God had gave him somebody shout amen and in the midst of telling them there was something that arose and what, was, what arose out of that was simply, watch this, was simply jealousy. Can I get some help here? You know, when there's jealousy, boy, I tell you, uh, the Bible says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Somebody say amen. Now, a lot of the world wants to say it's a green-eyed monster. Amen. I don't, I don't know about green-eyed monster, but I know the grave is dark and cold. Somebody shout amen. And jealousy is something that the Bible teaches us that you never want to be a 
partaker of or be caught up in say so it'll make you do crazy things so somebody lift your hand and say it'll make you do crazy things jealousy has caused men and women to kill their spouses come on jealousy has caused siblings to kill one another now you think of that jealousy is a terrible jealousy has caused people to run people off the road jealousy somebody say man jealousy goes right along with what the bible says is the root of all evil because most folk most folk have a love of money because they're jealous of somebody that has more than they got well ain't nobody wanting to hear me somebody shout amen there are men that got jealous of another man that had had a wife and a family to the point that that man would go just take up anybody just so that they would have a house and a family too. Uh, come on now. Lift, lift your hands. Say, jealousy can do a lot of things. It can get you in trouble. Somebody shout amen. If you say it, it goes along with covetousness. Well, am I, am I getting through to anybody today? It goes right along with covetousness. Somebody shout amen. One of the, one of the uh, very commandments is thou shall not covet. And that just simply means long for or want something that someone else has. So people will covet because they're jealous when they see someone else that has what they long for. Well, now somebody shout amen. They may have never known. They, would, they may have never known there was a better car out there. But because of jealousy over somebody else that had it, they ran out and got themselves way too deep in debt just to get something a hair better. Anybody ever, yeah, there, there's one in every family. Don't get mad at me today. But there's one or two in every family that will, that they got to have the best. Somebody shout amen. And whatever you get or whatever some of the other fat, they're always going to try to outdo that. Well, somebody shout amen. Always going to be somebody else thinks they make better banana nut bread. <laughs> Can I get some help here? I made blueberry bread this week, and Glenna says it's the best I've ever made. So I don't know if I'll ever get to make banana bread no more. Somebody shout amen. But people will, you know, I tease about that a lot of times just to try to aggravate my mother-in-law. Amen. I got to do something. Praise the Lord. But, but people will get jealous over the cooking. But ain't nobody wanting to hear me. They make the best spaghetti sauce. And, uh, look, look at somebody and say, boy, let them get as jealous as they want as long as both sides just keep bringing it to me. Uh, come on now. My, my tomatoes are bigger than anybody else's. My apples are redder than anybody else's. Jealousy. Somebody lift your hand and say, jealousy is a cruel thing. Somebody say, man. And exactly what took place around the table that day when Joseph came and told his family of the call that came upon his life through a dream that only God could have gave. Somebody raise that hand and say, only God can give a dream. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. So Joseph had that call upon his life, and because of jealousy, uh, and I know I'm just telling you, uh, uh, just, just giving you a rewind of what you already know, but because of jealousy, what his brothers did was take him and was going to kill him. Well, somebody shout amen. They wanted to kill him, but then they didn't kill him, and they thought, well, we'll sell him. Somebody shout amen. And then we'll soak that coat that he's so proud of. And that, and that daddy made mommy make for him. Somebody shout amen. We'll soak it in animal blood and then we'll take it back and say that he was eaten by a wild beast. Somebody shout amen. Now I'm going to stop right there because if, if, if 
Joseph got a call from that dream, and the next thing you know, his, his brothers are taking him out and putting him in a pit to sell him, somebody, or kill him, somebody shout amen. And then when, they, when he saw them take his coat and soak it in animal blood, I don't know about you uh, uh, right now, but uh, I, I believe that I would have looked at that and said, man, did I really get a call or not? Somebody shout amen. My whole purpose of telling you this is simply because when God gives something, a call or whatever the case may be, there's always going to be opposition. I dare somebody slip your hands up and say opposition. In other words, there's a fight coming. God is quiet in here, but I'll preach it anyhow. I know it's God. Somebody say amen. There's always opposition that's going to come. Joseph faced opposition. Somebody shout amen. All the way when he, watch this, once he got sold into slavery and he, and he got to where he was going, he was put in Potiphar's house. Somebody shout amen. And in, in Potiphar's house, he had it really made as a servant for one of the highest ranking people in Egypt. Somebody shout amen. But when he got there, he found opposition. I dare somebody to lift your hands and say, opposition. Amen. A fight was coming. It was Potiphar's wife. It wasn't his brother's, but now it's Potiphar's wife. And when he wouldn't succumb to that opposition, we know the story that she therefore accused him of rape. And the next thing you know, he ended up in prison. Somebody lift your hands there. He ended up. I don't know. I just don't know if you if you think the same way that I do. But when I read this story or I even think about it, I'm thinking to myself about me. And if I was in a prison now, somebody shout amen for doing nothing except running away from a from a, a, a adulterous situation. And now here I am in prison. I, I think I'd have been thinking, man, I was sold into slavery by my own brethren. And now, now I'm being thrown into prison because I was a good servant. Somebody, I, I, I'd say I'd be wondering, man, did that, was that really a call? Somebody shout amen. So many people think that, that once they become a Christian, if they have any kind of opposition, then they start doubting the very thing that is most important in their life. Somebody shout amen. And it just, it just caused me to, to start thinking in my mind, about this and how the church and how people, uh, once, they, once they start fighting opposition or getting opposition, one of the first things they do is throw up their hands and quit. Somebody shout amen. And I would just like to look them in the eye and just use this, this statement that's been used since the early 1900s. And, and I, I did background on this statement. But, but the, really, I'd like to look at them right in the eyes and tell them it comes with the territory. <laughs> so somebody lift your hand and say, that's what I want to entitle today. I've, I've said all of that to get to my title. Somebody shout amen. Raise your right hand and say, it comes with the territory. Jealousy comes with the territory. If you're a child of God and God's blessing you, it comes with the territory that people are going to oppose you. Somebody shout amen. The expression, watch this, it comes with the territory. It came from the early 1900s and it originally, listen to this, it was originally applied to sales territories or traveling salesmen. Amen. And it, and it started in the early 1900s when these traveling salesmen would have certain areas that were their areas, amen, to sell whatever the product was that they sold. And in the midst of their areas, there were certain places of the area, amen, that wasn't very likable. Well, somebody say amen. They weren't, they weren't the best, you know, of people or the best of uh, uh, communities, Somebody shout amen. When I sold life insurance, I thought, boy, I got my life insurance. I'm going really, I'm really going to make a lot of money and all this stuff. And I found out on my first appointment, it was in the projects. 
Well, ain't nobody like you don't know what the projects is. And, and that has nothing to do with the race because there's as many white folk uh, as there was Mexican and Puerto Rican, somebody shout, as well as black folk. Somebody shout, amen. It, it had nothing to do, it was the pro. I remember the very first appointment that I went on, I thought we was going to sell insurance. I was with my manager. If he was here today, he'd just be dying laughing. He took me to this place to just collect some money. And when we walked in, there, there were roaches crawling everywhere on the walls in the sink on the floor you couldn't hardly step on the floor without crunching some kind of ain't nobody wanting to hear me I got out of there as fast as we went in. I went back to the car. I shook my jacket. I shook my shoes. I shook my bag. I did everything. I looked at him when he came out and I said, if I take roaches home, I'm going to let Glenna wear you out. If you, if you think I'm going in that place again, you're crazy. Somebody shout amen. And, and really what that man could have, so I found this out later. Really what my sales manager could have looked at me and said, it comes with the territory. I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout amen. Every house that them salesmen in the early 1900s, everywhere that they went, wasn't going to buy his product. But you had to have as many no's as you do yes. And, and the no's just comes with the territory. Somebody, well, what's that got anything to do with us, Brother Raven? Well, it just really means that the areas that they went to as an overall area, there were good things and bad things. As a child of God, it comes with the territory uh, of discouragement. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me now. Somebody lift your hand and say, it just comes with the territory. The enemy is going to do everything in his power to cause you to be discouraged. Somebody shout amen. I, I told this story the, uh, uh, maybe last week, but I had uh, I had a, uh, a message right before I did a live broadcast. And, and a man that I really don't even know sent me word and said, are you ever depressed? And I immediately sent back, no. He immediately sent back and said, how in the world do you live and never get depressed? I said, I, don't, I didn't say I didn't get fight, fault with it. God, come on, lift your hands and say amen. Somebody said, Brother Raven, you get fault with depression? Well, sure. As a child of God, it comes with the territory. So somebody lift your hands and say, it just comes with the territory. Well, how do you deal with that? Well, I, 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 every day I try to get as much of the word inside of me that when that devil tries to fight against me, which is going to come with the territory, that in the midst of that, I am victorious over what the enemy is trying to put upon me. Somebody slip up your hands and shout amen. We, we need to understand something. See, most of the religious realm across America today, they, they want to believe and they're being taught that once you get saved, everything's smooth sailing. Somebody shout amen. You ain't never going to have no troubles. You ain't never going to have no trial. There's a church over in Pikeville right now. You know what they're doing? March Madness. Look at somebody say, it's March Madness. Amen. I come downstairs from the from uh, at the Y from where the uh, uh, treadmills are, and right there, big old poster says, "Come to our church and buy your ticket. Get your ticket outside in the in the corridor uh, for your chance to win twenty five thousand dollars." Amen. Ain't no wonder they get a crowd. I, well, I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, "Ain't no wonder they get the crowd." Somebody shout amen. They're getting a chance. They're going to be beam, uh, 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 busting at the seams come Easter Sunday. It won't be because folk want to hear the word. It'll be because somebody wants that $25,000. Well, somebody shout amen. Somebody said, you shouldn't say things like that. I hope they hear me. If you got to sell a ticket to get somebody in the house of God, you got problems. Somebody shout amen. Somebody said, well, why are churches doing that? But I'll tell you why. It just comes with the territory. That's men and women's mindset. They've been taught things like they never have to fight anything, never have to go through anything, never, never have to feel discouragement. Somebody shout amen. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Brother Raven, I hardly ever feel saved. Amen. I looked at them and said, get in line. So I, I could have used the phrase, it comes with the territory. Somebody said, well, I feel saved every day. Then why don't we act like it? 
Well, there ain't no, come on, look at your neighbor and say, he preaching, right? He just comes with the territory. <laughs> the devil, the devil wants us to have doubt, fear. All of the other things that he fights the body of Christ with. Somebody said, well, I just don't know if I want to be a Christian and have all that. Well, it just comes with the territory. And I got news for anybody that just don't want to be a Christian because of it. The Bible says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Somebody shout amen. So just life. Look at somebody say, just life. Those things come with the territory. Somebody shout amen. Folks, folks want to have all that. The younger generation is something today. They want to have all the things, material things that the older generation has, but they, they don't want to pay a price for it. Somebody shout amen. They don't, want to, they don't want to eat chicken noodle soup out of a can. They, they want to go every day to the Texas Roadhouse. They want to go every day to the Applebee's. They want to go every day to where you're spending $60, $70 for a tab. Somebody shout amen. They wouldn't know what to do if they had to live on Raymond noodles. Well, so they, they wouldn't know what to do if all they had in the cabinet was beanie weenies. Preach on, Brother Raven. And they think, they think, well, that ain't what I want to have. Well, that's just life. Somebody lift your hand and say, that's just life. There's times you have to struggle to pay the electric bill. There's times you have to struggle to meet. But, but if you want lights in the house, you got to do it. And you got to work for it. Raise your hand and say, you got to work for it. Am I right? Somebody say, man, well, I don't want nothing to do with anything. Like, well, it just comes with the territory. Whether you're saved or not, you're going to have to go through certain things in this life. Somebody shout amen. Folks are like that about their church. Well, I'm going to find me a place where, where I, I feel more comfortable because I've been hurt in church. Look at somebody and say, it comes with the territory. Ain't nobody want to hear me. They, they ain't a person in this building right now, no matter how long you've been in church, that you ain't had some kind of church hurt. But hey, somebody help me preach here. Am I right or not? Somebody, somebody didn't, you know, somebody uh, uh, snarled their nose at you. You had a new dress or you had a new suit and, and you walked in and instead of saying, boy, I love that you got that, they say sarcastically, where did you get that? How did you get that? And it'll hurt your feelings. Somebody raise your hand and say, it'll hurt your feelings. Won't it do it? Somebody say amen. I was working on a couple of my guitars yesterday, and, and, I, and I've had both of these guitars for a while, and, and it, the, the one guitar was bought for me, never paid a dime for it. The other guitar is worth $1,200, and, and I only paid $275 for it. Somebody lift your hands and say, that's pretty good. So I was working on them too, and they look identically. Uh, Brother Terry, they look identically the same. One is worth $2,800. The other is worth $1,200. One I got for free. The other I paid $275, and they look identically the same. So I was, I was just admiring that, and I took a picture of it, and I posted it. And, and, and I posted it just to see if people could tell the difference. And I really wasn't posting it for everybody, just the musician friends that I have. Can you tell the difference which one's the $2,800 guitar and which one's the $1,200? And the only reason the one is $1,200 is because it was made in 1978. It's very rare, and you can't hardly find them. I had one back in the 90s. I had to sell that thing to get our yard fixed and I regretted ever since I sold that guitar as a matter of fact the man said if you ever want it back just call me that man will not accept my calls and finally the Lord brought one into my path and I bought it Somebody shout amen. I wrote on that little post uh, this morning. I wrote about with, because people were asking which one's which, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote on the post. I edited the post and said which one was which and whatever the case was. And then I wrote on there back in 2005, what, my favorite guitar that I ever had was stolen from me. How many remembers that? 
stolen out of the back of my truck at a motel, spending the night in between two services. Stole that guitar, brand, brand new. Uh, that, that, uh, that, they, they only made a few of them. Stolen out of the back of my vehicle. I got mad. Somebody lift your hand and say, yeah, you got mad, I got mad. I got mad and I got angry and all the other thing. And the Lord spoke to me early on after, after that was taken from me. And he said, if you won't become bitter about that, I'll bless you with all kinds of guitars. I wrote that on there, but then I erased it. Somebody said, why would you erase it? Because some folks would be thinking that I was bragging. When in reality, I am. God has blessed me ever since. That devil stole that thing. Somebody shout amen. Well, why would God let the devil steal it from you? Well, that just comes with the territory. Somebody shout amen. David came back to Ziklag and found that while he was out in battle, they came, the Amalekites came and stole everything and everyone that David had. But God restored it. Somebody ought to lift your hand. Say, God can restore it. Which somebody might say, well, I don't believe in all that. Well, you go ahead and don't, but I do. And somebody said, well, how do you uh, understand that or believe that? It just comes with the territory. The Bible says that if you know who the thief is and you know what he's done, somebody shout him out, God will restore you seven times. I dare somebody lift your hand and say, thank God. There are things that are in your life the devil stole from you. And when God gives back to you, I'm happy as a lark. Amen. Raise your hand, say amen. amen. So I said, well, if you were really close to God, the devil wouldn't steal it. That's a lie. Amen. Raise your hand, say that's a lie. Amen. The devil's going to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. No, to steal is the first thing. God, I could preach on this a while. For him to steal is the first thing that the Lord mentioned. If you, if you allow him to steal, or you, you can't uh, uh, stop him from stealing, but if, if he steals and then you get bitter over it, then he'll kill you. Uh, and if he can kill your spirit, he'll destroy you. God, somebody lift your hand and say, he'll destroy you. But once he steals, the Bible says, if you understand that he's the thief, well, God will give it back to you if you're faithful. Having something stolen from you is just part of the territory. Raise him hand and say, amen, Brother Raven. It means, watch this. It comes with the territory. It just simply means I wrote this little line to myself. It, it, it means to expect certain things to be. Whew. Somebody shout amen. Slip up your hands and say, you, you, you need to start expecting the fight. I didn't buy one. You need to start expecting opposition. That way you're not blindsided. Some folks get blindsided and the first thing they want to do is throw up their hands. Am I right? When you understand that there is an enemy that's against you, you understand that it's part of the territory. It's just part of being a child of God. What makes you any different than Paul? Nobody wants to hear this. Am I right? What makes you any different than John the Baptist? What makes you any different than Peter and James and John, Bartholomew, Matthew? Come on now, Luke. What makes us any different? None. We just need to understand the same devil that fought them is going to fight us. And in reality, it just comes with the territory. Amen. Slip up that hand and say, Lord, have mercy. Territory means an area. You know what our territory is? Wherever God puts us. 
Raise that hand and shout amen. They had a lot of pastors. I see all these posts about how many pastors were, uh, 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 quit within so many months and, and how many a year quit and all these other things. And I think, I think, man, I'm fighting the same devil they are. Come on now. I fight the same problems and the things that they list on them. The, 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 and a whole lot more than just me. I ain't the only one. We all fight that. But once you come to the knowledge of that just comes with the territory. Somebody, somebody lift your hand and shout amen. Them that think they're just going to go into church and pastor 150, 200 people. Somebody shout amen. Can I preach a few minutes? And think they ain't never going to have no kind of trouble, no kind of trials. Ain't going to have to deal with people. Ain't, ain't going to have to be, uh, deal with controversy. And ain't going ain't to have to stand up in the midst of, of troubles and trials and make a stand. If that's them, they will quit. Yeah. Listen how quiet it is in here. Somebody shout amen. Well, I'm with you, Brother Ray, and I'm right behind you. Let you say, half the time you don't even under, you wouldn't know because I don't let you know yeah. what we have to stand against. Well, ain't nobody wanting to hear me. Somebody, somebody said, well, I want to know everything. Some things you don't need to know because if I let you know, you'd start choosing sides, and you might not choose mine. <laughs> Pastoring ain't easy. These these young boys that say, I'm a pastor. It ain't easy. Takes a toll on, on the man, on his family. Come on now. Some folk go to work and they leave it at the, at, at the job. If they got any trouble, they, they leave all of it at the job. And they pick it back up when they punch in the time clock. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Yeah. Preaching better, I'm getting amen. Unfortunately, when I'm at the house and I'm sitting in the chair trying to doze off, those things are on my mind. And too many times, somebody lift your hand, too many times because I'm still a man. Some say, well, I, I want a church, I want a pastor, but I don't want all that. Well, I hate to tell you. you slip up that hand, say it just comes with the territory. Them that say that, you know what they're just wanting to do? They want, they want a pastor as a career. They want to get their check on Friday, see you on Sunday, play golf Monday through Thursday. Unfortunately, playing golf three times a week ain't part of my territory. Somebody say, well, hallelujah. It means to expect. Raise your hand and say, you got to expect. Somebody lift your hand and say, I need a miracle. If, if you need a miracle today, raise your hands and say, I need a miracle. Unfortunately, you're going to be opposed by the enemy. He could care less what miracle you need. Or even if your miracle is justified, all he knows is he's going to oppose. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. He knows. Look at somebody say, he knows. The only way for you to receive a miracle is to be faithful. Amen. To have faith. Yeah. Somebody say, man. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what does he do? He fights you with fear and doubt. Amen. Somebody say, well, I don't want no fear and doubt. It just comes with the territory. Amen. Can I get somebody to shout Amen. I'm looking back there at Anna May. I, I, somebody posted a picture of Anna May up there in front of the class the other day reading them a story. But boy, if that was all there was, taking care of youngins, wouldn't that be good? Unfor well, this probably ain't going to be, uh, this ain't going to be because there'll be some people watch this and say, man, he's got the worst preaching etiquette there ever was. Unfortunately, when you take care of kids, they pee and poop on you. I want to be a mommy, but I don't want to have to do none of that. Well, you, 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 you better stay. You, you be <laughs> Can I get somebody to help me? Not only are they going to pee and poop, they're going to puke on you. 
looks at her. Oh, ain't it just beautiful? Ain't just the baby doll it eating its little bottle? Ain't that just, as soon as they get done eating, they spit up on you. Amen. I don't care how clean your shirt is. I don't care. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor's hat, just goes with the. You want that miracle, but you don't want no opposition. Amen. Truth of the matter is, without the opposition, you ain't going to get no. Somebody shout amen. You got to expect battles while you're waiting on your miracle. You better, you better understand you're going to have sickness before you have your healing. It's an amazing thing to me, Shay. Folk, folk want to believe in him as a, as, a, as a healer, but they don't want nothing to do with no sickness. Come on now. You better expect somebody shout amen. And you're going to get sicker before you get. Oh, somebody ought to lift that hand and shout amen, Brother Raven. You're going to end up fighting more sickness before the miracle, before the healing ever comes. But I dare somebody raise your hand and say, once you realize it's part of the territory. Now you're ready. I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, now you're ready for the miracle. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, well, I want the triumphs, but I don't want no suffering. How, can, how come I can't be triumphant in the Lord and never have to suffer? That's what people want. That, you, you know what that brings? They, they want to do anything that they want to out in the world because it appeals to the flesh. Amen. Somebody shout amen. But there's times you have to cause your flesh to suffer. You know what that means? Denying your flesh to do what it wants to do. Amen. Slip up that hand and shout amen. I use the example sometimes. I love peanuts. I, I could eat peanuts every day of my life. I could eat peanut butter and peanuts every day of my life. And I, I, I would love to snack on peanuts. I, I would love to carry them in my vehicle. I, I just love peanuts. And every once in a while, I can have a handful or, or maybe two handfuls. But if I ate them every day, I'd be suffering. Now, in the natural things, I have to understand because of the suffering, I have to deny my flesh. Amen. Boy, is anybody getting this? To receive the power to overcome, you're going to have to suffer. Amen. Because the battle will between, be between the mind and the Lord. Amen. The devil trying to control your mind, the spirit and the flesh. Somebody lift your hand. Am I preaching or not? Yeah. Well, I want to do like everybody else does, but not, not if you really want a miracle. Not if you really want to be triumphant. Not if you really want to be more than a conqueror. Amen. I know the Bible says we are more than conquerors, but that's through Christ. Amen. And you have to live right to be a triumphant more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Some say, I can do all things through Christ. You can, but you have to crucify the natural. Amen. Well, I don't want nothing to do with the crucifying. Well, that's part, say it with me, that's of the what? Whew. Anybody getting this? That's just part of the territory. I feel like the Lord's called me to sing, Brother Raven, but I just get too nervous when I get up. That's just part of the. I've been singing in church for 50 years. Since I was a young man, six, seven years old, I've been up in the pulpit singing. And at the age of 57 years now, my knees sometimes still wobble. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. I still wonder, can I remember the song or not? And I'm still young enough, my mind still works pretty good. If I forget it, I can make something up. Preach, Brother Ray. Huh? Lord, have mercy. 
We have to understand we have opposition. Raise that hand and say opposition. The devil wanting to fight against me. Fight against us. We don't want nothing to do with the fight. We don't want nothing to do with the crucifying. We don't want nothing to do. In reality, if you want to be his, God, somebody lift your hand and say, I want to be his. If you really want to be his, somebody shout amen and say it with me. Say, it comes with the territory with all of the fight. Somebody shout amen. Emily and me, I'm proud of them. I think they got a gift inside of them. Just because they got a gift don't mean they don't have to practice. I think they got a gift in them. Amelia's a little worse than Emily because I'll sit down and I'll say, come here and let me show you. She said, I already know how. I said, you got to do it like she said, I know. I'm glad for the confidence. <laughs> But sometimes, sometimes, even with confidence, somebody got to show you. Amen. Ain't nobody wanted to hear me. I, I want to I wanna play music. Do you want to practice? Yeah. Well, ain't nobody. Somebody lift your hands and shout amen. amen. I want to be a painter. Yeah, but do you want to scribble first? Amen. <laughs> God Almighty. Most of the time, before you're ever good at what you do, there's a lot of scribbling that goes on. There's a lot of off beats. Yeah. Emily, there's a lot of off chords. Even Grandpa hits them. Yeah. Ain't nobody. Raise that hand and say, God, help me to understand it's part of the territory. Am I right? So expect, raise your hand and say, I need to expect battles before the miracles, sickness before the healings, suffering before the triumphs. Get ready. Somewhere along the way, now that, now that I'm preaching this, you're, going, you're, really going, you're really going to be looking for it, but be ready. Somewhere in church you'll be hurt. <laughs> oh, nobody. So, somebody. I got hurt. I got hurt down at the gas station the other day. It's been over a week ago. I got hurt at the gas station. I, I should have went one day earlier and got gas because the overnight they raised it 30 cents. I pulled up there and I got bad off hurt. But I still got gas. I dare somebody lift, somebody lift your hand. I, 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 I dread going into Walmart and seeing the prices. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Me and Glenna go into the grocery store together. I, I, sometimes I don't even like to go because I know what's going to happen when we come to the cash register. Can I get some help here? What we used to buy for $50 when we first got married, $40 when we first got married, now it's almost 300 well, they, they, anybody else like that standing out and you even got to check yourself out you check yourself out and they've, they've quadrupled the price I told a lady the other day she had to come up and, 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 and because I rung something up twice and she had to fix that for me and, and, and she looked at me and said boy you, you do a pretty good job I was watching you I said yeah I need to be on your payroll I don't want to work. I just want to check myself out, but I ought to get paid for it. Ain't nobody want to hear me. Preach, Brother Raven. We let a whole lot of things hurt us, but we get to church, and the first thing that hurts us, we want to leave. If Brother Raven was any kind of pastor, he wouldn't let that stuff go on. Brother Raven is not a mind reader. And when the Lord does give me something and I give it to folks, then they say he's a meddler. Amen. <laughs> Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. So somebody help me. Some of you go through some things and I already knew three or four weeks ago. 
Why didn't you say something? What was the sense? Raise your hand and say, <laughs> I'll jump in the middle of your territory and you're going to get mad at me. I got enough, I got enough trouble keeping my own territory straight. <laughs> now, if I, really, if I really know the Lord wants me in your territory, I, I'm going to open your gate. No matter what that makes folk feel like. Somebody shout Amen. I just don't know if I want a preacher like that. Sorry to tell you, a real preacher. It comes with the territory. Somebody come to me one time and they said, Brother Raven, I don't, I don't like coming to your church and I'm not going to come to your church. I said, why? They said, because I, I'm afraid the Lord will tell you too much about me. And my, my reply to that was, well, just don't do nothing that you wouldn't be ashamed of me knowing. Somebody say hallelujah. I've raised three youngins. I, 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 I got four grandchildren. That's hard for me to say. I got four grandchildren. But you ask my three youngins if I didn't know somehow, some way. I ain't bragging. I ain't boasting. I'm just a daddy that's got a direct line. T tell me. Somebody, I ain't going to embarrass my daughter here, but she'd tell you. I'd, I'd give her the microphone if I didn't knew it didn't, if it didn't embarrass her. But she'd tell you, that somehow daddy knows. Ain't nobody want to hear me. Somehow a real man of God's going to know, but if you, if you ain't doing nothing you ain't supposed to do, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Amen. Slip up that hand and say, your territory would be good. <laughs> but if folk are messing up, guarantee something in the message is going to hit them. I dare you, I dare you lift your hand and say, hit me, Lord, if I ain't in the right place. I just don't think we have to have stuff like that. Well, here's what the Bible said. Raise your hand and say, here's what the Bible says. The Lord chastises them he loves. God Almighty, lift your hand and say, that just comes with the territory. I wished I wouldn't have got whippings like I did when I was young. I dreaded seeing that come. Ain't nobody wanted to hear me. I dreaded when mommy said, you going to get one. Sometime today. As soon as I see her coming, oh, Lord. I told her one time, I was up in my teenage years, she gave me a good whipping. I said, Mommy, I, I don't understand uh, uh, why a mother would want to whip its young and like this. I mean, you whoop me hard, Mommy. And you know what Mommy said? <laughs> That's what mommies do. And you know, uh, interpret that comes with the territory. <laughs> Preach, Brother Raven. Somebody raise your hand and say, It just comes with the territory. Am I right? I said, am I right? Let me give you these few couple things that I wrote down. I pray this is helping you today. Those of you that are watching, I pray it helps you. Need to expect But in the midst of that, here's something else you need to expect. Because it's part of the territory too. God will take care of his own. That's part of the territory. Somebody shout amen. David said, I was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David also said there's sorrows, there's sadness, there's all kinds of things. But he said in the night, that's all he said. But he said joy cometh in the morning. God Almighty. Somebody look at your neighbor and say no matter what you're fighting, what you're battling with, joy is going to come as long as you're faithful in the things that you need to expect are going to come. 
He going to fight you. Slip up that hand and say, he going to fight you. Raise your hand and say, folk going to talk about you. If folks saw you pulling in this driveway this morning, if they passed and saw you, they going to talk about you. Somebody shout amen. If you go down to the steakhouse today and you see some folks and they say, where you been? And you tell them, they're going to talk about you. As soon as you go up to get your salad. I ain't nobody. Preach, Brother Raven. As soon as one fish sandwich wasn't enough down at Arby's and you were back up there, they're going to talk about you. Comes with the tear. Oh, don't mind me. Somebody say, hey, man. It's an amazing thing to me how many people think, well, this can just be vanished away only for the devil to just continue to bother you. Amen. Somebody said, I need rest. I need rest in the Lord. I, I, uh, Christine stayed at the house last night, and I, I, listened, I listened just about all night long. And every time there was a little whimper, it woke me up. And I could hear uh, uh, Christina in there. She was in the same room with uh, Amelia. And I could hear Christina in there. Shoo. And I did that right there. <laughs> they was taking pictures of Rava yesterday. And, 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 and the girl that was taking the picture said, she'll smile and then cry. Cry and then smile. And, and you know what Glenna said? Christine done the same thing. We done been through that. Somebody lift your hand. So, so when you, but, but that's what you should expect that when you want to, but ain't nobody want <laughs> Am I right, anime? I don't know how in the name of goodness, Maul Brewer, Lord have mercy. Could you, could you imagine? She'd have had to have five. Twelve in school, first grade through the twelfth grade. Lord, have mercy. Lord, help that administration. <laughs> if the third grader was getting picked on, I guarantee the fourth and the fifth grader was taking his side. But it comes with the territory. I watch sometimes, I watch sometimes the girls, they, they, they ride their bikes. Boy, they're good on them bikes now. They're a whole lot better than their grandma. We got tape to prove it. We won't show it, but we got tape to prove it. And I look at them, and, and, and the last time I watched them ride, I said, uh, Emily needs a bigger bicycle. Chris, uh, or uh, Amelia needs a bigger bicycle. So we're going to give Amelia Christ, uh, or Emily's old bicycle and we're going to have to buy Emily a new bicycle and then I said we'll throw that little one away and Amelia said hey, ain't happening that's Ravis so I went I went to a, 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 a Walmart one morning and there was the prettiest bicycle you ever did to lay your eyes on and it was on clearance right out, right out when you walk in the door just the prettiest thing had its own basket had its own cup holder. Oh, it was pretty as it could be. And I came straight home and told Emily, and she said, I don't like that color. <laughs> I can't believe a young and would be like that. It just comes with the territory. I dare somebody lift your hands and say, man, we carry on every week where we going to eat. What we going to eat. I dare somebody lift your hand and say, yeah, just like that. One wants McDonald's, one wants Arby's, one wants Burger King. And, 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 and sometimes the, 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 the grandkids do that. And I, I, go through, I go through two different drive throughs And the kids now, you know, they're old. Uh, you, you do too much for them grandkids. We did the same thing for them. They just forget it. Preach, Brother Raven. 
Taco Bell forgot Lisa's, what do they call them? Cinnamon twist one time. After church one Sunday night down at, 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 up in Norwalk, we got all the way home and didn't have no cinnamon twist. Lisa went, I want my cinnamon twist. She about as old as Amelia, I guess. And Grandpa turned around. It was Daddy at that time. Daddy turned around, went all the way back. Somebody said, well, that's just four minutes down the road. Now, I'm talking about it was about 13 miles. They forget about stuff like that. And as a daddy, as a grandpa, you can sit and say, I just don't understand why. It just comes with the, ain't a thing you wouldn't do for your young. And I dare somebody, don't act like I spoil my babies like you don't. Am I telling the truth, Anna Mae? We, and you know what? We may have not had everything they got, but we sport too. What we sport? Mommy would whipped me, but I needed a whole lot more and a whole lot of things that she knew I did, and she let me slide on. But I'm telling you right now, when it comes to the Lord, you will reap what you sow. Well, I can't believe there's a God that you love that would do that. It just comes with the territory. For Joseph's dream to come to pass, Joseph had to go through all that he went through. And then at the end, somebody lift your hand and say, then at the end, the blessing came. He was being blessed in the prison. He had favor. That's what the Bible says. He had favor with the jailer. He had favor, favor with Potiphar. But it was through all of Potiphar's house and the jail that he finally received the miracle. And the miracle came. Watch this. The miracle came when he was able to feed his brothers and his daddy. The very ones that sold him. Somebody, the, the very father that didn't come looking for him. I don't know about you, but if, if, if Lisa and Christina came and said that about Matt, I'd have been out there looking. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. Somebody lift your hands up, but he fed them all. And he even looked at them. In one place in those scriptures, he even looked at them and he said, I'm your friend. And he meant it. Man, he could have been bitter. Somebody lift your hands and say, he could have been bitter. But he looked at his brothers. He, he even put two in prison. Ain't that right? Was it two? He put, he put them in prison to hold them till the ones came back. They didn't have a driver's license you hold till you get back. Ain't nobody. Somebody lift your hands and say, he held them just to make sure he could follow through with his call. He wasn't bitter. At that point in time, he wasn't bitter about being sold. He wasn't bitter about Potiphar's wife. He wasn't bitter about being in prison. He looked back at it and said, all of these things, but the Lord was with me. God. Somebody slip up your hand and say, as long as the Lord's with me. So raise that hand and say, as long as the Lord's with me. They're going to be all right. Come on, raise them hands and say, it's going to be all right. Somebody shout amen. It'll be all right as long as the Lord's with me. Somebody said, well, if the Lord's with you, you wouldn't go to jail. He can be with you in jail. Amen. Well, if the Lord's with you, why, why would you be sold into a pit? Even in the midst of, here's what David said. David said, if I make my bed in hell. Amen. Phew. David messed up. 
It was his own fault. It wasn't his brothers, but the Lord was with him. God, somebody slip up that hand and say, the Lord is with me. I'm going to get what's coming to me. It's part of the territory. Somebody shout amen. Raise that hand and say, it's part of the territory. For every time I thought of this because I was thinking of this message I was early this morning. For every time I heard Christina go, shh. <laughs> I wished I'd have taped it. I, I, if I thought my phone would have picked it up. Shh. For every time she says, shoo, she'll say, oh, ain't that pretty. Come on. She was in, in her little seat the other day. And I was getting ready to leave, go somewhere, and I bent over in that seat, and I just looked there, and I, I just went. <laughs> and she looked at me and frowned and cried the biggest cry there ever was. And I was, I was so upset, and I just walked out of there. I thought, she don't like me. Yesterday, I had her up in my lap, and I was going, <laughs> and she was going, <laughs> she even laughed. First time I ever heard her laugh. For every time, so every time you say, shh, God will give you one back. Amen. God, somebody ought to lift your hands and say, that also comes with the territory. Somebody shout out. Amen. Somebody slip up your hands and say, it comes with the territory. I know folks don't like to hear these things, but it's true. When you're a child, when you're growing up, you'll look at that mom and daddy and don't act like you didn't. Somewhere along the way, we all do, and say, boy, I'll tell you what, I'll get out of here. Somebody help me. You get, you'll get stubbed up about it. But for every time you did, the Lord let you know a mother or a father's love. Can I get some help? Somebody slip up your hands and say, Man, that just comes with the territory. Huh? A husband and a wife, it just comes with the territory. Don't it? I, I, somebody lift your hands. We, 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 are, we are put in a position because of the media. I was thinking of this the other day. The media has us thinking certain things. It really does. Entertainment has us thinking. Of Let me tell you something. That little white fence around that little corner house on the corner of Oak and Elm, and inside's June Cleaver, men. <laughs> you forget it. You watch June Cleaver. She ain't never. She ain't never in a nightgown or or a, a, a moo moo. And her hair's always fixed. She's always got them four-inch heels on. Come on. And for you women that think, uh, uh, what's his name? Warren is going to come home with his suit and his tie still looking good. And he looked as good as he did when he left this morning. Nikita, help me preach. You're living in a fantasy world. Slip up that hand and say, amen. amen. The media's got you thinking as soon as you wake up in the morning, you can kiss all over each other. It ain't going to happen. You, you both breath stink. Boy, I'm, I'm getting in big trouble with my vernacular today. Right on tape, brother Roy. Right on tape. I don't care. Ain't it? The media's got you fooled. But you can still love one another. Raise that hand and say, you still love one another. To have, a, to have a happy home. To have a happy home. All of these things are part of the territory. But to really have a home, the Lord has to be in the midst. 
Somebody raise up that hand and say, that comes with the territory. It's just the way it is. Raise your hand and say, that's the way it is. Without him, I'm preaching to you, and I'm closing here. Without him, you are constantly going to have trouble. There's going to be trouble. Raise up that hand and say, there's going to be trouble. But with him, you're going to have trouble because that's part of the territory. But thank God you have one that will bring you through. How many believes that? Raise up your hands all over the building. Raise up your hands all over this building.